In this video, we're going to take a look at CSS gradients in detail. By the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to be able to start implementing CSS gradients into your projects. So be sure to watch to the very end as we'll be looking at both linear gradients and radial gradients, enabling you to create some really cool effects such as these. If you enjoy videos on web design and development, be sure to hit that subscribe and bell notification down below so you're always notified when a new video is released. My name's Amit, you're watching DevDreamer, let's dive in and see what CSS gradients are all about. So first of all then, I'm going to add a div to a HTML file. And you've seen me do this plenty of times before. Okay, so this is going to act as our container for our gradient. Let's head on over to our style.css file. Now when it comes to gradients, there are two types that we can create and those are linear gradients and radial gradients. Let's first take a look at linear gradients. Okay, so on our div, we'll say background hyphen image, and what we're looking for is linear gradient. Now you also have repeating linear and repeating radial gradients as well. We'll come and look at those a bit later on in this lesson. For now, let's select linear gradient, and as a minimum, this requires two colors. So let's just say red, and blue. Colors need to be separated by a, a comma as well. And as a minimum, that's all we need. Because if we take a look at our circle here, we can see that now we have a smooth transition between the colors red and into blue. We can add more colors here, so we can say yellow, and this will add that color to our gradient. Let's just stick with red and blue for now. And let's see how we can manipulate this even further. We can also specify a direction for our gradient. As you can see by default, the direction for gradients is from the top to the bottom. So by default, this is to bottom. We can change this to, to top. As you can see now, the red goes from the bottom to the top. We can say to right, to left. We can even be more specific and say things like to bottom right. If we said bottom left, it will go down and then towards the left. Now we can get very specific here and actually specify a numerical value in terms of degrees. So we could say 180 degrees. We could say 90. 234, which looks pretty cool. We can even use the dev tools on Chrome to play around with this figure and get the exact effect that you're looking for. So let me show you how to do that. Just do right click, inspect, and let's select our element. Here it is right here. And we can just double click this. Click so you're selecting the degree so that the actual cursor is over it. And now using the arrow keys, we can move up and down. And if you take a look at the element above, that's actually taking effect as we change the degrees here. So you can actually play around with this and get the exact figure that you're looking for. Let's set this back to 234. Another thing that we can do is we can specify when we want the transition from colors to begin. We do this by adding a percentage value after the color. So for example, if we want red to continue for 35% before it starts transitioning into blue, we simply add 35% after red, like so. So just a space and then 35%. So now red starts transitioning at 35%. And if we add a figure to blue as well, Let's just go for, let's say 50%. We can add repeating here. And this will simply repeat our pattern like so. Okay, so that's linear gradient. Let's just get rid of this. And this as well. Now let's take a look at the radial gradient. Let's just comment this out. And again, we'll say background hyphen image. And this time we're looking for radial gradient. Let's add our colors. This time I'm going to go for, let's go for dark orange and yellow. Let's also remove our border radius so we have a square. Now, once again, as with the linear gradient, as a minimum, all we need is two colors. But as you can see, the major difference between the two types of gradients is that the radial gradient go from the center outward. And these can be in the form of a circle or an ellipse. By default, this is an ellipse. So let's just remove the width and now if you switch between the two, you should be able to see the respective shapes. So as you can see without a width, 
the default shape is an ellipse, but with it, it's a circle. The other thing we can do with radial gradients is specify how big we want the final shape to be by using closest side, closest corner, furthest side, and furthest corner. Let's take a look at some examples. So closest side and corner will spread the gradient to the side or corner that is closest to the center of our gradient point, whereas furthest will spread the gradient to the furthest side or corner. So for example, we can say closest hyphen side and then at and then we can specify a size. So we'll just say 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So now we can see that the side closest to our center, so this is the center point here, the side closest to our center point are these here. So this side here and this side here are closest to this center point right here because we specified closest side. And if we change this to closest corner, the closest corner to our center is this corner here. Let's also take a look at the furthest side and furthest corner. So if we change this to furthest hyphen side. Okay, so this is the center point here. The furthest side from the center point is going to be this side here and this side here, which is why that gradient is sort of spreading out towards those sides. The furthest corner to the center point here is this one here. And of course, we can say repeating radial gradient. Let's add 30% to this and let's say 60% to yellow, and we get a repeating effect like so. Okay guys, so it's gonna be quite rare that you actually use these uh, furthest corner and closest corner, etc. But of course, it is good to know. The main thing you wanna get your head around is how the gradients work in terms of the colors that we use and the color stops, as well as specifying the direction of the gradient using top, right, bottom, and left, or specifying a degree. Okay guys, so I hope you found that helpful and useful. If you're not already, please subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified as soon as the next video is up. Give this video a like and a share, get practicing and as always, I'll see you on the next one.